We need to go to the press conference at the U.S. Attorney's Office. Let's listen in. They are setting up that press conference there. This involves a number of federal agencies. That is U.S. Attorney John Lausch, who is about to speak. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Today, a federal grand jury returned a 22-count indictment charging former Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan and his close friend, Michael McLean, with racketeering conspiracy, bribery, wire fraud, and extortion offenses. The indictment accuses Madigan of leading, for nearly a decade, a criminal enterprise whose purpose was to enhance Madigan's political power and financial well-being while also generating income for his political allies and associates. The charges allege that Madigan used his various elected and professional positions to further the goals of the criminal enterprise. Those positions included Speaker of the Illinois House, Representative of Illinois' 22nd District, Committeeman for Chicago's 13th Ward, Chairman of both the Illinois Democratic Party and the 13th Ward Democratic Organization, and Partner for the Chicago Law Firm of Madigan and Getzendanner. The indictment alleges that Madigan McLean and other members of the enterprise unlawfully solicited benefits from businesses and other private parties. As alleged in the indictment, Madigan and McLean unlawfully requested that various companies and interests uh, with interest in state legislation, including utility company Commonwealth Edison, pay Madigan's associates uh, as a reward for their loyalty to Madigan at times in return for performing little to no legitimate work for those businesses. The indictment also accuses Madigan of engaging in multiple schemes to secure business for his law firm, including work from parties with business before the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago. The indictment alleges a long-term multifaceted scheme to use public positions for unlawful gain, including no-show or low-show jobs for Madigan's political workers and private gain for Madigan himself. The schemes describe involvement of a leader of state government, one of his close confidants, top management of a large public utility, consultants, and others. Unfortunately, this type of criminal conduct drastically undermines the public's confidence in our government. Simply put, it's not a good thing. As I've said before, we have a very stubborn public corruption problem here in Illinois. Rooting out and prosecuting public corruption has been and will always be a top priority of this office. This investigation remains ongoing. We have more work ahead of us, and we will get that work done. As I've said before, if people have information that they believe can be helpful to our enforcement efforts to hold individuals or entities accountable for their conduct relating to the abuse of public trust, whether in this case or any other case, please reach out. Call the FBI at 312-421-6700 or report we the information at the FBI's website, which is fbi.gov forward slash tips. I'm joined up here today by the FBI Chicago Field Office Special Agent in Charge Emerson Bowie and IRS Criminal Investigation Chicago Field Office Special Agent in Charge Justin Campbell. We also have with us, you see several people, AUSAs and, and agents who are standing behind me, who've worked tirelessly on this investigation for years. I'd like to thank each and every one of them for their outstanding efforts. And now I'll turn it over to Special Agent in Charge Bowie and Special Agent in Charge Campbell to make a few brief comments. And after that, I'll take some questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lausch. Again, my name is Emerson Bowie. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the Chicago Field Office. I think today demonstrates a commitment to Chicagoans, Illinoisans, and the American public of the great and the hard and the steadfast work that the U.S. Attorney's Office, 
the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the IRS are committed to do to always keep the confidence of the public. Words like accountability, trust, and integrity just can't be words on a sheet of paper or words we say arbitrarily, but they have to be our outward sign of our inward grace in everything we do. So I commend the men and women of all three agencies for an exceptional job that they performed. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Justin Campbell. I'm the special agent charged for IRS criminal investigation here in the Chicago field office. IRS criminal investigation is most notably known for its financial investigative expertise. Our special agents are masters of their craft. This case is no exception. The charges announced today are an outstanding example of the strong and lasting partnership that the IRS, FBI, and U.S. Attorney's Office share to rooting out public corruption. I want to publicly thank our partners at the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office, and we look forward to justice being served on this case. Thank you. If there's any questions. Yes. News conference I attended some years ago, Mr. Maddox told us that uh, in a good year, he, his law firm made more than a million dollars a year. Well, can you take us through the two, the two point uh, X millions uh, and how, much, how it breaks down? Okay. I, I'm not going to go into that in, in detail, but what I will say is what that indicates with that amount, I assume that you're talking about the forfeiture amount that's alleged at the end of in the indictment. And that is, that is the proceeds. Um, the ill-gotten gains um, uh, based upon the conduct that's charged in the indictment here. And other than that, I... I can, can you tell us what you're alleging about the solicitation and the getting of business for his law firm? Yes. So um, the indictment's broken down um, in, in various ways. I mean, there is a set of counts that relates to the ComEd bribery-related conduct, and those would also be ill-gotten gains that are included in that forfeiture amount. Um, as well, because those are benefits that are going to the allies and associates uh, of, of Madigan, in addition to um, anything that, that the law firm did, did in fact receive um, based upon the conduct here. So CSR yes. has a reputation of being incredibly careful, knowing the law, knowing the rules, and maybe tiptoeing to the edge of what would be perceived as unethical, but never breaking the law. When did he cross that line did you find evidence that he was trying to, yes, get up to that very point of the nexus between the law and what is ethical and wrong? So I don't, I don't know that I could answer your, your question directly, but what I can do is I, I can put you to the indictment. It's, it's 106 pages. I, I know you've all just received that recently. But if you go through that indictment, I think you will see the answers to your question ultimately. You will see... Um, occasions that are spelled out in detail throughout that indictment, which talk about actions that are taken by Madigan and others um, that, we've, that we've alleged to be you know, criminal activity. Um, you will see additional things in the indictment as well that will talk about um, people attempting con to conceal um, that criminal activity to make it appear that it, that it was not illegitimate. So I, I would point you back to that in, in particular. Well, Mr. Rush, yep. can we ask you this? And I don't, please, I do not mean to sound flippant, but through countless public officials that have been charged or the announcement made in this very room, people in the back of this room would always say, well, yeah, they got him, but they'll never get mad. He's too smart. It was a guy that never used it. He didn't text. He didn't email. He didn't write anything down. Most things were done face to face. Can you speak to the difficulty of this investigation? Um, what, what I can tell you, and, and, and I think this, you will see this um, in the, in the indictment, again, which, which is lengthy, um, uh, we use all the investigative tools um, that we can. You've seen us, whether it's a public corruption case or a violent crime or a narcotics case. We use a whole host of investigative tools. Those aren't spelled out specifically in the indictment, but what you do have um, are words that are used in conversations. You do have words that are used in, in documents or on emails that are spelled out throughout the indictment. And that's the core of our evidence in this case. It's the words that are spoken by people. It is the things that show up on documents. And those are the things that actually form the basis for the charges that we brought. So when you say words that are spoken by individuals, this would include wiretap conversations? Uh, again, the, the indictment doesn't talk about specifically how 
um, the conversations, um, the words were gathered, but you can see throughout the indictment there are conversations that are discussed in which actual words are quoted in there. Okay. Again, we, we just received this, yep. so still reading through 106 yep. pages. But when did you really believe that, okay, we, we've got mad again on something that does, again, cross that line, that is illegal, and further, you noted that this inv investigation is ongoing, yep. so you're saying the investigation into Madigan himself continues. This entire investigation continues, um, as in any case. We, you know, we, we indict an individual. Um, oftentimes, we receive additional information that might lead to additional charges. That may or may not happen here. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but our investigation is ongoing into, you know, basically the, the categories of conduct that we've been looking at. And we've been looking at this conduct for some time. I mean, you'll, you'll recall, I believe it was in the summer of, of 2020, when ComEd entered, we, we charged ComEd in the information they entered into the DPA. And so, you know, this has been some time coming where we have continued to look at the evidence, follow the evidence where it leads, and then ultimately bring charges when we think we can prove those charges beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. Michael McLean, uh, Madigan's longtime friend, is already charged with a lot of the same conduct in a separate indictment, and is facing trial in September. Why was he added to this indictment? Yeah, so, um, so Jason, the, the, I mean, you'll see there's, there were some additional charges in this indictment that were not previously alleged, one of them being the racketeering conspiracy. Um, as I think you know, we, uh, the, the case that's pending right now, um, there's a trial date that is scheduled, and so, um, you know, not going to get into the details of, of why we make specific charging decisions and why one indictment versus another, but we thought it was appropriate to bring these charges in this fashion, including both Madigan and McLean. Mr. Ross, can yes. you explain, because this gets a little complicated, because you've got his role as Speaker of the Illinois House, his role as the head of the 13th Ward Democratic Organization, also his role as head of the Medicare Guess and Banner Law. Was, was the fact, can you explain how these things dovetailed with each other, and was the money making, the funds directly to Michael Madigan, confined only to funds that were funneled to his dad? Okay, so... Um, can answer that in, in two ways. So one, if you look at the racketeering conspiracy count, you'll see the definition of the enterprise, and the enterprise makes up um, um, all, all of those entities. You know, the enterprise is defined as Michael Madigan, Michael McLean, the office of the speaker, the 13th Ward Democratic Organization, and the law firm as well. And when we talk about the benefits that are provided, again, I, I would remind um, people, if you look at in particular count two, which deals with um, the solicitation of bribery conspiracy, um, involving ComEd, a lot of the benefits here are the benefits that are going to um, the political allies and associates of Madigan who received those low-show, no-show jobs working for ComEd. So when we talk about funds that are going, it's not simply, you know, legal fees to a law firm, it's also the benefits that are being provided to the allies of, of Madigan. But you are alleging also that he enriched himself. That is, yeah, it, it, that he endeavored to do that, a absolutely, yep. Yes. You and your predecessors have been filing indictments uh, against our politicians for years, decades. Uh, you finally get the biggest man at the top. Does it leave you just shaking your head that, that people have not gotten the message that you're coming after them? And, and can you speak to getting the big fish, if you will? Um, I, I, I don't know what I, what I would categorize it, it, things in the, in the same way that you have. What I, what I would say is I think every time that this office brings another corruption case. Um, I, I, you know, and I, I was here as an assistant U.S. attorney for a number of years before I had the great fortune of coming back in this job. Um, I think, um, I think we all shake our heads sometimes when we think that there's another corruption case that, that's happening. It happens with other crimes as well. Um, um, and that's why I've, I've, you know, kind of defined our problem as a very stubborn one. Um, but that's why we continue to put the resources that we do um, into our public corruption cases. We have great um, agency partners, the FBI and IRS and others, in order to root out the corruption wherever we see it. The indictment yes. mentioned um, a meeting with Madigan and the governor to discuss state boards and other things. There's no allegation in this indictment, um, you know, against the governor or his staff. I, and I, I, you know, say there's other people that you will know is, uh, in the indictment as well that have contacts um, 
with Madigan or others, and there's no allegations of wrongdoing against, that, against them either. Again, I'm sticking to the four corners of the indictment as I have to. Why was a separate grand jury needed for Madigan? I believe that the same one that was involved with Conrad also was responsible for the indictment of Mapes. Hooker, why, why, was, this, why was this separate? I'm not, I'm not sure I, I understand your question, but nor that I can answer it anyway. So, <laughs> that's was, there okay. any evidence, was there any evidence that Madigan followed through on a state job for Solis or one of his relatives? Um, on the, um, there is, what I will say, there, there's no allegation in the indictment that, um, that the um, state board position was actually given. Okay. Is there a way for a, an attorney such as Madigan to do this sort of work and not break the law? Okay, I, I, that goes far outside uh, the four corners of the indictment. I, I, don't, I, I don't think I can comment on that. Tell them our question. Yep. You face a deadline here, uh, Mr. Lasted, uh, uh, if I'm recalling correctly, that Tom Ed agreement expired after three years, right? So that's, it expires this year? Um, the, the, I, I believe that the term on the, on the, on the DPA is, is three years, but Look, we, um, we follow the evidence where it leads. Um, there, there is no deadline, essentially, other than, other than statute of limitations that we, that we face. So, um, you know, we follow the evidence where it leads. Sometimes we get there more quickly than we think. Other times it takes us longer. And I think, as you all know well, um, we're pretty thorough and deliberate in this, in this shop. And then one more technical yep. follow-up. So this lets you, the racketeering lets you go back uh, almost a decade. Um, without that, well, I mean, typically, a statute of limitations is five years. In, in a lot of, generally speaking, in a lot, in a lot of federal uh, statutes, it's five so years. Can we yeah. ask just one protocol question? Yeah. And that is, uh, Mike Madigan is not today the Speaker of the Illinois House, but I know in previous uh, public corruption cases with governors and other people, this would require the approval of the Attorney General. Did Washington have to sign off on this? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. Comment at all. There's been reporting, and AT&T itself has disclosed that it's under investigation. Should we expect any indictment regarding AT&T or anybody else that is mentioned within these 106 pages? Again, I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. If convicted, how? What's the potential penalty for this one speaker? Good question. And there's a lot of different. There's a lot of statutes that are charged in this indictment, um, and we can follow up specifically on each of those. Um, the most significant um, amount of time that. Um, that the two defendants who are charged here could face would be a maximum of 20 years on account. For instance, racketeering conspiracy is a 20 year maximum. Um, the wire fraud uh, counts are a 20 year maximum. So that, there are other charges that have lower um, potential maximum penalties, but those are the largest. Uh, yes. All the minutes are uh, waiting trial in the same building and now Michael Madigan indicted. Is, is this the Chicago way to get? I mean, there were two, the, probably the two. They were like the poster children of the Chicago way. So, uh, yeah. So I, again, I, I I don't I don't know that I can comment on that, Jason. I, I guess what I would say is that um, you know the the problem continues to be a very stubborn one. I mean, you look at the at what's alleged here. We have conduct that that's here that's alleged up until 2019. Um, so um, you know we're there is there is you know and it's a decade long, essentially a little less than a decade long scheme that that's described here. So. Um, it, it lasted for a long time, and it, you know, it lasted up into 2019. So. Do you have reason to believe that it goes back further than that? You just didn't maybe have the wiretaps or the ability to begin an investigation? Madigan has been both an attorney and speaker for 40 years, not a decade. Yeah, that goes outside the four corners here, so I can't comment on that. Okay. Final question. Let me ask you, did, did this ongoing investigation, obviously it was, you know, reported up the chain to Washington, does the fact that this is an ongoing investigation have anything to do with your staying on? In the Biden administration, when many of your colleagues were asked to turn in resignations, yeah, I, I I can't answer that. I serve at the pleasure of the president, like every other U.S. attorney, and I'm honored to do so. Did you ask to stay out to bring this to an indictment? Uh, I, I'm not going to comment on that. That's that's a that's a great question. So uh, count one is the racketeering conspiracy charge. Uh, counts two through seven essentially allege a lot of the same conduct, uh, the comed related bribery conduct, as I would put it. And then the counts after that are the ones that um, um, that are not the comed related bribery um, conduct. So those, um, uh, I, I suppose, you could probably start off with if you're looking for things that are different. Mr. Lasseter, 
Okay, thank you all. Last question. What was that again? Was this more more difficult than intense given yeah. both the, just the extent of it? Every every investigation is challenging. Um, at the start, there's challenges throughout the way, and the great to, team of lawyers and, and agents behind me um, they they met all those challenges, and, and I'm, I'm sure we'll face more as we proceed. So thank you, thank you all for being here. And there you have it, U.S. Attorney John Lausch announcing a 22-count indictment naming the former powerful Speaker of the Illinois House, Michael Madigan, now 79 years old, and his friend Mike McClain, the charge that Madigan ran a criminal enterprise, the words of the U.S. Attorney, for a decade. Our political investigator Dana Kozloff has been watching with us. Dana, these charges include racketeering, bribery, and wire fraud. Yeah, and of course, I'll go back, as you mentioned and you heard, uh, many of them go back to the ComEd scandal. Uh, this arguably is the most powerful or for, the most formerly powerful politician in Illinois to face federal uh, charges. Um, and we are going to continue to look into what this means as our news coverage continues. Jim Murray. Dana, thank you. We have much more ahead on this bombshell indictment against former Illinois Speaker Michael Madigan. Be sure to stay with us for the 5 o'clock news with Brad Edwards and Erica Sargent.